Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video to differentiate these four network devices, a hub, switch and bridge and a router. I've seen, um, I personally confuse many of these uh, devices and uh, now that I have a better understanding of where are they used and how actually they work within an example, I thought I'm going to make a video to actually illustrate this. How about we quickly jump into it and show some examples. All right, how about we start with the hub and what we're looking at here is our four devices here and I'm only showing the MAC addresses. I'm not really showing the IP addresses because it's irrelevant at this configuration, but there is always obviously an IP address here. So these are the MAC addresses A, C, D, B. Okay, and there is a hub. And the hub is basically these machines are connected to the hub through different ports, right? And the hub's job is when a certain signal comes to a certain uh, port, it will just basically broadcast this to all ports. Very simple. So let's say I'm sending a frame that is destined to machine C, to the MAC address C, from MAC address A. So A is sending a frame to C. And you might say, Hussein, how, how are we sending frames? Since when I send frames to MAC addresses, I never do this as a user, as an engineer, I never send MAC addresses. Well, you don't really send frames, but technically you for example, you're sending a GET request, and that GET request is in layer 7, and that layer 7 has, you, you specify the IP address, right? And when when that packet goes all the way to layer 4, it adds the port and the source port, and then goes to layer 3, it adds the IP address, the destination IP of machine C, and then the source IP of U, which is A, and then all the way it goes to layer two. Now it has to add the MAC address because at layer two, we only deal with MAC address. And that, that's when we do our address resolution protocol to find out well, what's the MAC address of this IP address and it finds out that, oh, it's C. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the details, but that's essentially, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about layer two here. So A want to send a frame to C, the, the frame goes to the hub, the hub take a look and says, eh, I don't really, I'm not smart enough. I don't, I don't need what, what, I don't know what's this. I will basically broadcast it to all other ports. So that frame, despite it being destined just to C, D gets it, B gets it, and C gets it. Yikesy, very yikesy. So C basically will accept it because the destination MAC address is itself. D will says, meh, that's not me, I'm gonna drop it. B will says, meh, that's not me, I'm gonna drop it, okay? Unless they are in promiscuous mode, which in this case, they are, they are essentially sniffing the frames. So that's the hub. Hub is almost never used these days, but it's always good to understand what they do. And they are not used, obviously, because of the inefficiency that we're talking about, right? It's just broadcasting. So the network becomes very busy for unnecessarily, right? You're making B and D drops your stinking frames. Why are you sending it to begin with, right? So let's go to the switch. A switch is a little bit smarter. So we have the same configuration here, A, C, D, B. I don't know why I started with C, D, B as A, B, C, D. Okay. All right. And then A is connected to the switch, B is connected to the switch and D and C as well. These are different distinct ports. Okay, so when A want to send a frame to C, the frame will go to this port, but the switch will say, aha, the switches will actually look at the content. This is something the hub doesn't do, right? The switch will actually look and says, oh, let me parse it. And we'll look, oh, the destination MAC address is C. And last time I checked, there was someone named C connected to me on this particular port, so I'm gonna send it. So as a result, we only send the frame to C. Very efficient, right? So the switching is actually does the switching of the frames and it only delivers to the destined. So the switch is also smart enough, it will record the MAC addresses as it arrives and goes through the machine. So now the switch, now that A sends something to the switch, the switch knows that A is actually on this port. It remembers that fact. So it keeps some sort of a table in its device and it looks up that tape. Very efficient stuff. Switch is very, very efficient. All right, let's talk about a bridge. A bridge is really nothing but a smart device that connects two network together as if you're connecting it with a wire. 
but a little bit smarter than just that okay and uh, i included this network now with hubs because it just illustrates better than an actual switch because switch just almost makes the bridge useless uh, uh, in this situation for for illustration purposes so so let's say you have a, a device a and device b and they are connected to its own little bit in the network here and c and d they are also connected to their own little uh, small network and you want to make these visible to each other they want you want all of the four machines to get the same uh subnet they become the same subnet IP addresses essentially so that they can talk to each other right so if you want to do that you can use a bridge it will have knowledge that oh C is actually on this side D is actually on this side A is actually on this side B is actually on this side that's that's the knowledge it has right so if A want to send a message to B if the bridge gets it it says what, what are you doing b is actually on your side i'm not gonna send it to my to my other side right and, and if c want to send a message to d and the and the bridge gets it and says what are you doing see you don't have to send me anything i'm gonna drop i'm gonna filter out the message here okay that's what the bridge here but if c want to talk to a the bridge will say oh okay okay actually a is on the other side sometimes the bridge actually doesn't know that so it has to test so yeah that's the value of a bridge and bridge being wireless is really really powerful especially if you have like a, a bridge access point here another bridge access point here and then you just uh, treat it as a bridge right they connect it to either that they they secure the connection wireless right uh, encrypt and whatnot and then if you send anything to this particular point of the bridge it will just bridge it to the other side okay and that's the how the wireless bridging works very powerful stuff yet it, the these guys will become essentially in one network so the ip addresses essentially they are almost the same subnet because the bridge is nothing again think of it like a wire you're just connecting the wire but it is smarter because it doesn't just randomly send packets it knows it keeps track of what frames almost like a switch if i'm going to compare the bridge to the switch I would say the bridge just have a no general knowledge. The bridge knows, hey, C is on this side, D is on this side, E on this side, K is on this side. That's it. It doesn't really know which port or which path. It just says, hey, it's it's there. I know it's there. It just send it. The switch, if C and D and E and F connected to the switch, the switch is so efficient that it's just only gonna send it to C. All the devices that we talked here, the switch, the hub, the hub is not even layer three, the hub is layer one, really. It just literally works at the signal level. It's just dumb. It doesn't look at the content. Switch is layer two because it looks at frames, right? Which is layer two. Bridge is definitely layer two because it looks at the, at the frames, it looks at the MAC addresses. All right, the final example where we're gonna put use the router and uh, specifically to route traffic from an internal private network that we have here with the IP address space 10.0.0.1 slash to the internet the router has a public IP address in this case 4444 and it also have a private IP address which is also the gateway for all those puppies so let's take an example a simple example so let's say I want to send an IP packet right where I deal with IP addresses. I I don't know. That maybe 10.0.0.4 is a web server listening on port 80 or 4.4.3. And I want to send an IP packet. Of course, you're going to send, obviously, you're going to prepare the TCP segment and IP packet and all that stuff, right? But eventually, you're going to have a beautiful IP packet. The source IP address is 10.0.0.3. The destination is 10.0.0.4. So you try to send that, but add layer 3. Layer 2 takes over and says, okay, uh, 10.0.0.4. Uh, it's cool or whatnot but i need the mac address at the end of the day i need with the i deal with mac addresses at layer two what's the mac address of 0004 it does an arp and ask everybody hey hey guys who have the mac address for 10004 uh, and the same process goes for the arp request for follow the same thing it's not magic it's all networking you receive 10.0.0.4 received that says oh yeah that's me it's b so eventually that that machine will know that oh 10.0.0.4 is b and then now it will send that 
MAC address and it will go through the switch and go ahead and can choose that. Let's spice things up a little bit. Let's say 10.0.0.3 want to do a DNS on 8.8.8 or maybe there is a web server. 8, I know 8.8.8 is the Google DNS, but just imagine it's not. <laughs> imagine it's a web server. And you want to send an IP packet, same thing, 10.0.0.3 to 8.8.8.8. The machine will say, wait a second, this is not in my private, beautiful I, uh, subnet. And it knows that because it applies something called a subnet mask. 8.8.8.8 it is not definitely in, in my subnet, right? Unlike what it did with 10.0.0.4, which it knows, hey, I know it's in my subnet. That's why I send an ARP. But if it doesn't know if the 8.8.8.8 is not in the subnet, it asks a person or a device that knows all the answers. It says, hey, hey, you, deal with this stuff. And that is the gateway or the router in this case. So what the machine does is, okay, uh, I give up. This is not in my subnet. I need to send it to my gateway. All right. Guess what? What's my gateway? My gateway is 10.0.0.1. My gateway will take care of delivering, routing this message to the actual de device that it needs to go to. But guess what? 10.0.0.1 is my gateway, right? And what's, my, what's the MAC address? Same thing. You have to do an ARP on 10.0.0.1 and get the exact MAC address of 10.0.0.1, which is which is my gateway. And you might say, Hussein, how did you know? How does this machine know that this is the router? Well, that's when you, you first get an IP address, you also get a gateway. IP. Go to your phone and you, you're going to see it that, oh, this is your gateway. Gateway is a very critical thing. So it does an ARP and it gets back, hey, this is R. And here's the most dangerous, this step is the most dangerous thing and, and where R poisoning can happen. If someone else pretended to be the router, it's a dangerous step because all the flood of outside internet traffic will go through it. So be careful with our poison. I talked about that in another video. The destination frame becomes uh, a MAC address becomes R and you can send it through C, all right? It says, okay, uh, the switch will say, oh, R, R is actually this side. I'm not gonna send it to anybody else. The router will get that beautiful frame and says, oh, you wanna go to 8888 and you are 10.0.0.1? Well, 888 is actually a public IP address, so yeah, you I can't just send you, send you as a source IP address 10.0.0.1, 10.0.0.3 uh, all the way to the internet because this guy will have no clue how to route this, right? If this was an, another internet network, let's say 192.168.1.2, then yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the source IP as it is. And thank you for whoever corrected that for me. Thank you. And uh, yeah, but if it's an internet, mm, I need to do something called NAT, right? Network address translation, which I, which I talked about right here. And I need to change you. You can't go naked like this. You're naked, buddy, right? You can't go with 10.0.0.3 as a source IP address. So I need to change you as more. I'm going to put my public IP address 4444 as the source and then you're going to go to the 8888 and then we're going to send and then very similar uh, routing, a little bit more intelligent goes into the internet and eventually it reaches the 8888. 8888 will uh, process the packet and respond to whom? It doesn't know 10003. <laughs> it knows 4444 because that's what the source IP address. So it sends it back and the router gets it. But now the router needs to remember, right? The router is a stateful thing. It remembers that, hey, uh, this guy f the, on this port actually was 10.0.0.3. So I need to reshuffle this, check my NAT table and send that packet back to 10.0.0.3 because it's the one who requested it. And now you might have another question. Oh, what if three of those guys talk to 8888? How does the router know which one to actually, uh, uh, which response belongs to which machine? Well, it all's taken care of. Don't worry. Each uh, in the TCP stack, right? Each la uh, layer four specifically, there's something called source port. And this is the most important thing right to do like proper, proper routing. This guy will have will have the same destination, but the source port will be different, right? So in this case, you all these guys will have the same source, all these packets will have the same source IP address, which is 4444, but the source uh, port will be different. And this will be uniquely mapped to the machine that actually did the request. All right, guys, uh, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome, goodbye.